This episode is brought to you by Cash App. Cash App is an easy way to send, spend, and save your money. Besides just sending money back and forth, with Cash App you can buy, sell, and send Bitcoin instantly. It's as easy as mashing together a churro and a macaron. Download Cash App today and use code BABISH22 to get $15 for free, and $10 will be donated to No Kid Hungry. Terms apply. This month's churron flavor is anise, but there is a limit to three churrons per customer, so please maintain decorum. Thank you. You know, I'm not even a huge macaron girl, and, and churros are just like, you know, hit or miss for me, but the combination is too early. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the churrones from Broad City. A combination of a churro and macaron, this faux fancy pastry has eluded me for years, mostly because it sounds pretty hard. So let's get started with screwing up till we get it right. First off, a quick and easy buttercream frosting where our star anise flavor is gonna live. I have here 225 grams of unsalted room temperature butter that I'm gonna beat until soft, scraping down the sides of the mixer bowl, and in three stages, adding 450 grams of sifted powdered sugar. I recognize this ranks as moderately to notably fussy, but this ensures a light fluffy buttercream with no lumps. Adjust the consistency as necessary with whole milk and flavor with about a half a tablespoon of star anise extract. What results is a unique tasting frosting that tastes better than it tastes bad. So we're threading the needle for trendy New York bakery. Now for the churro pastry in a medium saucepan, we are combining 120 grams each, unsalted butter, water, and whole milk. Bring this concoction to a bare simmer over a medium low heat. Meanwhile, we're combining 120 grams of bread flour with half teaspoon each kosher salt salt, and ground cinnamon. Tiny whisk until homogenous, and then once we got a simmer going, kill the heat and add the dry stuff. Then we're going to paddle it about with rigor and consistency until no lumps remain. Then we're going to place it back over medium heat and cook for two to three minutes until a thick golden fawn starts to form on the bottom of the pot. Now we're headed back over to a cleaned and reset stand mixer, wherein we're going to deposit our steaming lump of dough. Then we're going to beat it on medium low speed for about 30 seconds to help start cooling it off. But while still nice and hot, we're going to start adding four eggs one at a time, waiting until each egg is fully incorporated before adding the next. Then beat this guy together on medium speed for about one minute until a soft serve ice cream like quaff forms on the top of the dough when displayed on an inverted finger. Now we're going to place the completed dough in a piping bag with a big old fluted tip. Now traditionally these are squeezed directly into 350 degree Fahrenheit frying oil and snipped to size with scissors, but I had just a devil of a time trying to get any of them to come out long and straight like in the show. After one to two minutes per side in the fry oil, these guys are ready to drain on a paper towel lined rim baking sheet. So to try to ensure their shape, I decided to pipe and pre-freeze the churros. I'm going to go with four short and two long, which I'm going to freeze for at least 20 minutes and up to several months. Then upon plopping in the preheated fry oil, I was pleasantly met with churros that kept their shape, frying up golden brown after about four to five minutes, a little bit extra time since they were frozen. And then we have to contend with their color. Normally churros are rolled in sugar while still warm, but this proved ineffective with colored sugar. But after a brush down with simple syrup, the brightly colored sugar was much more apt to stick to the pastry. So we're going to do a few nice pastel colors, which we're going to allow to cool completely before slicing and stuffing. For a macaron style presentation, we're going to split these in half lengthwise with our very sharpest, smallest knife. Now, unfortunately, after cooling, I found that these churones had become flaccid. Nevertheless, I'm going to stuff these guys just to see what they taste like before we try another iteration. And there you have it. They don't look great. They don't feel great, but they do taste great. I think during the frying process, not much moisture is allowed to escape the pastry. So it ends up getting a little floppy and gummy. But churro dough is almost identical to shoe dough, which when baked at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 35 minutes, getting brushed down with simple syrup at minute 25, and baked until deeply golden brown, almost burnt looking. This will ensure that they have a rigid shell for structural integrity, and that their interiors will stay light, fluffy, and dry. First, we have to allow them to cool completely. You can speed this along by putting them on a wire rack, or if you're really in a hurry, you can wave them around in the air in a figure of eight pattern. Now onto the color. The colored sugar was kind of a bust, so I'm trying out a food coloring spray, of which I am inhaling an alarming amount. The blue doesn't look awesome, but the red looks okay, so we're going to split these guys lengthwise, check out their light webby interiors, ready to be loaded up with frosting. In goes my second batch of anise-flavored buttercream, which this time I added a little bit of orange zest, which really tied the room together. Top them up, and there you have it, the Chiron. And while it only looks barely passable, how does it taste? Well, it's no cronut, but it is light, sweet, and crisp, and uniquely flavored, just like Broad City, am I right? Maybe just skip the food coloring if you value your hand skin. 
Thanks again to Cash App for sponsoring today's episode. Don't forget to download Cash App today and use code BABISH22 to get $15 for free and $10 will be donated to No Kid Hungry. Terms apply. Thank you.